Hey guys, what's going on? Fred London here. You guys know what to do is always like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Today we've got a few different topics. Make sure you stick around. One of them's about Kai Havertz, so I think you'll enjoy. So the first story. This one is about Angolo Kante's return, Levy Giroud's hilarious moment, and four things learned in Chelsea training. We're not fussed on the rest. The one we want to focus on is Angolo Kante's return, and that is amazing news because he is back with the first team doing his training. Of course, we know he had concerns over the virus and everything, and he wasn't so sure he wanted to be training and putting his family at risk. So. Uh, he wasn't training with the first team, but Kante is back. The obvious headline was the first picture of the France World Cup winner back in full training, having been working out alone because of his health concerns during the past fortnight. It is unclear if he'll be fit enough or indeed comfortable with being part of the squad for the first game back away to Aston Villa on Sunday. And it's a very encouraging sign to see him smiling and getting stuck in, which is very true. It's nice to see, as you can see in this top image, Kante's involved there. He's smiling, he's, he's you know, in and around everyone, so there's no... I guess there's not as much concern from him about, um, you know, contracting the virus, giving it to his family, something like that. So very glad that Kante is back. Hopefully, you know, he is ready for the first game back. We've got about two weeks um, until the Premier League officially opens and Chelsea will have their first game. So there's time for him to recover. Is two weeks enough? Maybe. Maybe it'll be enough to get him back. Maybe he'll miss the first game and be back for the next or something like that. But of course, Kante is a very crucial part of our team, so it'll be good to have him back. I really hope he is. To be, to be quite honest, I was preparing to go the entire rest of the season uh, without Kante. I thought he might just be like, you know what, until like we're very certain that things are completely safe. I thought he was just going to say, like, I'm not going to be involved. Sorry, guys. Which is absolutely fair, um, but it looks like he's back in with everyone else. So that's some good news. And hopefully we have Kante fit for the first game and he can bag a goal against Aston Villa or something. So the next story, as I mentioned, there's one about Kai Havertz, and here it is. Kai Havertz, Chelsea want to sign Bayer Leverkusen midfielder. And if we go further down, it does say that Leverkusen have not received a formal offer for the 20-year-old, but is a leave Real Madrid and Bayern Munich have held talks with the club, but again, no offer. So there's just been discussions, maybe inquiries on the price and stuff like that. Um, Abramovich is willing to give Frank Lampard significant backing in the transfer market this summer, with a deal for RB Leipzig, Timo Werner agreed in principle. Uh, Havertz, who is under contract at Leverkusen until 2022, so he has got a little bit left on his contract, but you know, only at two years. So if they don't sell him this year, then next year he's going to go a lot cheaper. So I do think that they might be looking at cashing him in. Uh, has attracted interest from a host of top European clubs. The German international, capped seven times by his country, has scored 15 goals and made eight assists across 38 games in all competitions so far in this campaign. So obviously you're looking there at um, 23 goal involvements in 38 games and he sort of plays a, a cam. He can play, I think, on the left wing. It's either left or right. I think it's left wing. Um, he can play a striker. So pretty much anywhere up that attack in midfield and then on one of the wings, I think it's left. Um, it's obviously a very good young talent that I think Chelsea should definitely be focusing on bringing Stamford Bridge. I have mentioned my concerns before about, you know, if we bring him in, what does that mean for Mason? What does that mean for Ruben? Like, are we essentially saying, yeah, I think we're done with them. Maybe one goes out on loan, the other one stays and, you know, fights for his spot in the cam roll. Um, do we not utilize him there? Do we utilize him as a winger? Because I guess we could have Timo Werner on the left, Tammy up front, Hakim Ziyech on the right, um, Havertz as a cam, and then, but you're still leaving out um, Pulisic and Callum hudson Adoy in that team. So who gets game time, you know, in the next game? Are we going to try and stick with a structured front line or are we going to be trying to you know switch it up every week be, be a little more dynamic and of course there are, are more substitutions available um for the rest of this season and potentially going into next season i'm not sure if they've set any definitive rules but i think it's five substitutes now um in the premier league so that opens up the door for us to be able to you know throw on two wingers or something like that which normally in a game you might see one winger go on a striker and a center mid or something if you really need to go forward and attack whereas now you could have a striker two wingers and a, two fullbacks or something like if we sign Alex Hell let's bring him on to grab a goal because we all know he's got it in him so there's also been contradicting reports 
uh, on the Kai Havertz deal. There's been reports that Chelsea have submitted a bid of around £75 million, which is um, low €80 million. Euros. Apparently, they want around €100 million. Euros. So, uh, we're around like 15 to €20 uh, million euros of their valuation, which could potentially work still to be fair um you can add in like bonuses and stuff like that um you, know, you could add on like a sell-on fee that the by leverkusen get if we ever sell him on stuff like that that you could sweeten the deal with so there's those uh, reports that are saying we have officially submitted then there's reports saying that we are preparing to submit and then as you can see here there's ones that are now Chelsea have serious intent in signing Kai Havertz according to CF Bayern. If you don't know CF Bayern, by the way, it's Christian Falk. He is a, a very reputable uh, guy. He's one that was talking about the Timo Werner deal and all that. Um, he's one that has talked about a bunch of like, any sort of German stuff in the past. He uh, was talking about Kalmas and Adoita Bayern before and how it you know might might not happen. He's very well known on the German side of things. Of course, Bayer Leverkusen are a German club. So he knows his stuff and Build Sport were one of the ones that um, broke the Timo Werner deal. So he seems to be very up to date and he seems to be in the know that Chelsea have serious intent on signing Kai Havertz. So my personal take on it, I do think we should do it just because, you know, he's one of those generational talents that seems to come along and you might regret not going in for. Um, of course, it's a lot of money. So say we end up paying 85 million pounds something like that and we end up getting our guy are we ever going to make 85 million pounds back on him you know like we, he would need to perform at a very high standard for him to improve on his current price um say he becomes the next like messi next ronaldo then sure he would probably be worth about that much but then who's paying that money like a PSG going to have to come knocking for us to even make a profit on this guy. So he wouldn't be a purchase in the thoughts of like, okay, we buy him now in five years, you know, say we win the Premier League, win the Champions League, let's just go crazy. Um, and we look at selling him on, who's going to buy a guy that's worth that much money? You're looking at your premium clubs like PSG, Man City, although I don't think we'd sell to Man City. Um, you could look at Bayern, maybe. We know Bayern are interested in him at the moment. Um, but, you know, there's no concrete evidence on whether he's going to one or the other at the moment. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen's, uh, I think it was their owner, came out recently and stated that they're still, I think he said somewhere on, along the lines of, we're still hopeful that we can complete a sort of contract renewal to keep him at the club. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he wants to leave. I think he knows that there's a lot of interest from a lot of big clubs and it's an easy time for him to move and get a really big move, a really good contract, a very good club and hopefully that club is Chelsea. And then just a little something to end the video off. I found this quite interesting. I've seen a few different places reporting it and I can't tell the validity of it. I think it makes a little bit of sense to be fair, but there's a lot of different sites reporting it some of the non-reputable ones so i'm not too sure we'll see what comes of this in the coming days but apparently chelsea head coach frank lampard has reportedly been told he must operate a one in one out policy on transfers after an agreement was stuck with the rb leipzig star timo werner um so that's quite interesting you know like apparently we're gonna have to say we sign Havertz, and that means like ross barkley's gotta leave if we sign Jaden sancho like you know I don't think we're going to if we sign Havertz. I don't think we're going to as it is. But I think there's a chance. Um, but if we do sign, you know, Havertz, Ross Barkley has to go or something. If we sign a left back, then it means Emerson or Marcus Alonso is going. There's been talks of us looking at centre mids, as you saw in my uh, Pjanic video the other day. So if we get a centre mid, then that means Jorginho's got to go. If we get, I don't even know what else. Like if we get Saeed Benrahma, then it means a winger has to go because we don't have that many wingers. So that'll be an interesting one see how it works with wingers because at the moment we need to buy wingers because we don't have wingers so do we have to get rid of what a center mid if we get a winger who we're going to get rid of Kovacic no Kante no Jorginho ideally not but it's possible uh, Billy Gilmore I would not want to get rid of like there's a, a lot of options here so um it's going to be difficult to operate on a one in one out policy but I mean, I'm sure Frank Lampard will find a way. He's a very, very intelligent man, and I trust him with all, all my Chelsea stuff. So hopefully Frank makes the right choice and doesn't get rid of like someone that we're going to regret. Like I'm sure he won't get rid of like a Billy Gilmore who we're all hyped over and then end up seeing being the next Kevin De Bruyne or something.
And then as usual, if there's a good question on any of my previous videos, I like to answer in uh, the end of the video. So as you can see, Imad Bachelor commented, hey, what do you think of Chelsea's chances to finish fourth in the table? Love your vids. First off, thank you for the support. I really appreciate that. Um, what do I think of our chances? I think we'll do it. I'm very, very confident in us doing it. The only thing that concerns me is, you know, like we've seen confidence this season and then you get a dodgy result away against like Newcastle or I don't know some other like lesser club, if you get me. So Aston Villa will be a tricky one to come back to because I mean, any game to come back to in this scenario is going to be tricky because everyone's going to be eager to get that win and get going. But they're uh, down and about the relegation zone. So they're going to definitely be looking to you know get the wins and move up that table at least get draws against clubs like Chelsea so it's going to be a very difficult task for us um but I'm pretty confident we'll do it I just uh, I'm going to be gutted if we don't and we end up losing Champions League we don't know currently how fifth spot will um play out because City's appeal is pending so even if we get fifth we might get Champions League but if we miss out on Champions League football next season with, you know, the signings of Timo and Hakim Ziyech and Kai Havertz, potentially, that is going to suck because you want to see those guys in the best competitions. And it might even affect our chances at getting them. I don't know if we've got um, deals in place that require us to maybe be in the Champions League. Like, I don't know if, you know, our Timo Werner deal might say this deal is only valid if Chelsea get Champions League or same for Kai Havertz. Like Kai Havertz will say, right, I'll do it, but only if you can guarantee Champions League. So we'll talk at the end of the season. So there's a lot of work to do for this squad. We know we're capable of it. We've been sitting around fourth pretty comfortably uh, for this whole season, but there's been points we've you know dropped on and I don't want to see that at all. So I really am confident I'd give us maybe like a 70% chance, 75% chance. Um, so it's, you know, the vast majority, but there's a part of me that's a little concerned. But yeah, that was going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. If you want your comment or question featured um, in any of my videos at the end and want me to answer it, then be sure to leave it down in the comment section down below and I can answer that. But that's the end of this one, guys. See you in the next one. Goodbye.